Oh yeah. All right, guys, I'm gonna read uh, Zach's lie, and we're gonna move into chapter 13. If you have the hard copy of the book, chapter 13 is on page 119. The journal entry is Sunday, October 1st. Zach says, I don't have much time to write today because I'm in the middle of cleaning Sam's building. Remember, he's making extra money. The job is hard, but the pay is good. The food is amazing. And Catalin is about 150 feet from where I'm working. Oh, no. Not again. <sighs> Love is in the air. <laughs> oh, no. Stop it. By Sunday afternoon, Zach had managed to get most of the sawdust out of the building. But there was still a lot more to do. Surveying the mess, he figured he would have the building cleaned out about the time he entered high school. He walked across the street to the store and bought a Coke. When he got back, Sam and Catalin were inside the building looking over his work. It's starting to look good in here, Sam said. Now all I have to do is figure out what to do with that mountain of bagged sawdust outside. Are you ready to take a break? I just did, Zach held up his can of Coke. I mean, a longer break. What about dinner? Zach asked. Well, but what he was really worried about was missing a chance to spend time with Cat. Uh, you'll have a Basque dinner, Cat said. But this time, it will be authentic. Last night's wasn't? Basque food tastes better when it's cooked in the mountains. We're going to take some supplies up to my grandfather. He'll want to feed us when we get up there. Dinner and breakfast. No school tomorrow. Teachers, in-service day. We're spending the night up there? <laughs> Sam nodded. That is, if you want to, and if it's okay with your mom. Of course I want to. After a quick shower, Sam drove Zach over to the bookstore to ask his mother. On the way back, they stopped at Zach's house to pick up some clothes. And by the time they arrived at the hotel, Catalina and her parents had all of the supplies ready for her grandfather. As the truck pulled away, Mrs. Cristobal shouted, You tell that old bear that we want him down here for a visit in the next two weeks, or I'm going to send a couple of boarders up to haul him down the mountain by force. Catalina leaned across Zach and shouted back, It will take more than a couple of boarders to get the bear off the mountain. Who's the bear? Zach asked. My grandfather. Benat Pascual, Catalin explained. Benat means bear in Basque. Hmm, interesting. They arrived at the sheep camp near sunset. An old man wearing a weathered cowboy hat, down vest, in woolen pants with cuffs tucked into scuffed cowboy boots, walked out of a very large canvas tent. When Zach opened the door to the truck, Catalina ne nearly climbed over the top of him to get to her grandfather. Benat picked her up under the arms and swung her in a complete circle. A second man came out of the tent and walked over to Sam and Zach. This is Benat's partner, Ander Toussaint, Sam said. Ander smiled at Zach and then began an animated conversation with Sam and Basque. Zach listened for a while, then stepped away and took in his new surroundings. Streaks of red sunlight washed across hundreds of sheep grazing on the steep hillside beyond the tent. A cool, light breeze buffeted the white smoke coming from the tent's stovepipe. About 50 feet from the camp was a small corral made of rough-cut trees. Tied to the top rails were two saddled horses. Zack walked over to get a closer look at them. He had never ridden a horse. His parents' idea of a vacation had not included horses, camping, or anything remotely related to the outdoors. When the Osbournes had gone on vacation, they visited cities, theme parks, and museums. 
and they stayed in hotels. This was another reason Zack was surprised his mother had chosen to move to Elko, Nevada. Sam retrieved a bundle of letters from the truck cab and tossed them to Ender, and then joined Zack at the corral. So what do you think? This is great, really, Zack pointed to the horses. Minette doesn't use a truck or four-wheeler? No. He believes in herding sheep the old-fashioned way. I don't even think Benat has a driver's license. How does he get into town if he needs something? He rides down to the highway and uses a phone booth to call the Nevada. One of us brings up what he needs or picks him up and drives him into town. He doesn't call very often, and aside from food, most everything he needs is up in these hills. Except for his granddaughter, of course. And Cantaline led Benat over to the corral by the hand and introduced Zack. Benat crunched Zack's hand and gave him a bright smile. You are welcome at my sheep camp. Cataline's grandfather looked like a bear. He had a barrel chest, broad shoulders, and alert eyes the color of black diamonds. His complexion was dark cured by years of sun and high desert wind. Benat looked at Sam. I need to check on the sheep before dark. Ander will be worthless until after he's read his letters from his sweetheart. Do you want to go for a ride? Unai? Instead of answering, Sam untied a set of reins and swung into the saddle easily. What are we waiting for? Why does he call Sam Unai? Zack asked. It's just a nickname he has for him, Catalan explained. In Basque, it means shepherd. My grandfather says that in his heart, Sham, in his heart, Sam is a Basque shepherd. But instead of sheep, his flock are the schoolchildren. He watches over us. Zack had certainly experienced that. Benat shouted something at Ender, mounted his horse, and they trotted away. What did he say? Zack asked. He told Ender that if dinner wasn't ready by the time we got back, there would be no more wine for a week, Cataline said. He doesn't mean it, and Ender knows it. Want to go for a walk? They walked to the top of a small rise above camp to a rock outcrop, and looked across the hillside to where Banat and Sam rode along the edges of the vast sheep herd. What are they looking for? Zack asked. Sick or injured sheep, strays, coyote signs, anything unusual. Catalin started down the other side of the rise. There's a canyon down there. It's my favorite place in the mountains. Zack followed her. I guess this is quite a bit different from Oregon, she said. Zack felt uneasy. Yeah, I'm used to a lot more trees. At the bottom of the canyon, they came to a game trail and followed it in the waning sunlight. The air had a spicy smell to it that Zack had not encountered before. Do you miss Oregon? I don't know. His discomfort grew. I don't think about it much. How about your friends? You must miss them. Zack wished she would change the subject. I miss them sometimes which was true, but I've made a lot of new friends here, which was a little bit of an exaggeration. Did you have a girlfriend in Oregon? Zack turned red. He's blushing. I'm sorry, Cataline said quickly. I guess that's none of my business. No, that's okay, Zack hesitated. I didn't have a girlfriend. Although there had been a girl at his old school he had been interested in. Your mom's opening a bookstore, Zack nodded. So what does your dad do? Dad, Zack thought. Oh, he's an international drug smuggler. <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't seen him in a while, Zack took the initiative and changed the subject himself. I've noticed you and your friends reading books in the cafeteria. I guess you started a fad, Cataline said. Zack laughed. 
a rabbit flushed ahead of them. Thanks for inviting me up here, she smiled. We better get back before my grandfather starts to worry about us. I guess we should, Zack said. Cataline took his hand, and they walked back up the trail. When they reached camp, Ender had dinner well underway on the stove inside the tent. Benat was tending the horses, and Sam was building a campfire. I'll help Ander with dinner, Cataline said. Not that he needs it. She went into the tent. Zack helped Sam with the fire, wondering if he now had a girlfriend. <laughs> By the time they had the fire going, dinner was ready. Cataline came out of the tent and sat next to Zack. A moment later, Ender came out carrying two loaves of freshly baked bread and a wheel of cheese. The meat will be done soon, he said. They sat around the fire, tearing off pieces of bread and slicing thick slabs of cheese from the wheel with Ender's hunting knife. How is your mother? Benat asked Cataline. She's mad at you. She is always mad at me. She says that if you don't come down to the hotel in the next two weeks, she is sending people up to bring you down. Ha! She said that. She means it. <laughs> we will see. You've had a fair warning, Grandpa. That's all a man can ask for. Benat sniffed the air. Thank God you brought us steaks. We've been eating nothing but mutton for the past ten days. <sighs> Mutton's delicious. Ender went into the tent and came back out with a plate piled with steaks and a pot of boiled potatoes. It was hard for Zack to believe that anything could taste better than the meal he had eaten at the hotel the night before. But it did. He was beginning to understand why Benat stayed up in the mountains. After they ate, the men passed around a leather bag of red wine and squirted the juice into their mouths with their heads thrown back. You see, the Basque country is very near Pamplona. Pamplona is famous for people drinking wine out of the leather bags. Sam was as skilled with the bag as Benat and Ander. I think when I grow up, I want to be a sheep herder, Zach told, Tat Zach told Catalin. There are worse things to be, she said, but you're a little late. Most sheep these days are raised on huge corporate ranches in the flatlands. They feed the sheep medicated pellets and high-nutrient hay so that they grow faster. And before you decide to become a shepherd, you need to try herding during the winter when it's really cold. I don't know how they can stand it. Who owns these sheep? Benat. And he loses money every year, according to my mother. The hotel and restaurant make up for what he loses out here. He pays under well. It makes him put half of his money in a special account he can't touch until his contract is up. Ender has been here for two years. He has another year to go. Will he go back? Hard to say. He has a girlfriend back home. He'll either go back to her, or he'll try to save enough money to have her come over here. Ender went into the tent and came back out with an old battered guitar and a small accordion. He gave the guitar to Benat, and they began to play and sing. Zack did not understand the words, but it didn't matter. End of chapter. This was my favorite chapter because it reminds me of when I was in my 20s and I lived in the Crimean Mountains on the Black Sea, and I would hike to the top of the mountains with my friends, and we would have great big picnics together, and we would actually see wild boar, and we would have the view of the Black Sea. And yes, to me, the, the mountains bring a type of romanticism to things. Everything tastes better. You can see the beauty. You can see the beauty of God's creation. So that's that's why I like this chapter. Los cielos cuentan la gloria de Dios y el firmamento proclama la obra de sus manos. Psalm 19. Good job, guys.